cool. So who, uh, before we get started, who is, who's playing which characters? I'm Myra the shaman. Okay. The cool. trickster with the trickster hey. god. Excellent. Thank you. And Ben, what are you playing? I'm playing Hex. That's the name I use for all my characters. Basically, I'm playing a witch. Cool. And Meredith, you're the healer? Uh, yeah, I'm playing Auntie Sharon. Uh, she's, uh, she's a healer from New Jersey in her 40, like 45 is her age. Okay, cool. And we are all, this is all of us, correct? I'm Carice. I'm a reality hacker. There you are. Okay, I, I was like, wait a minute, we're missing something. <laughs> okay, cool. You are there. <laughs> so we have a trickster, a witch, a healer, and a reality hacker. Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, as I was saying, all of you are at Catastrophe, Catastrophe being a wild ecstatic festival with um, a safer reputation than some such festivals. It does tend to have, uh, the word about it is generally good. People usually enjoy their experience there. Now, now for as anyone who has been to one of these kinds of festivals can attest, they're transformative. And as anybody who knows anything about psychology or spirituality knows, transformative is not always easy or pleasant. And so catastrophe has been named for the, um, essentially the, 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 um, the phenomenon of taking your expectations and smashing them into little pieces so that something new can grow from the ruins. And so, we begin. As I was saying, all of you were doing something at Catastrophe, and you, you could get to decide what it was you were doing at the time, but you start to feel kind of drowsy and, and a little bit uh, sad. Then you wake up. So it's dark. It wasn't dark when you found yourself falling into that, uh, that trance, that sleep state, but it's dark and it's chilly. And you find yourself, you're, you're, you're laying on the ground, dust, and uh, you feel a chilly breeze kind of washing, washing over you and little grains of dust caressing you, caressing your, your, your whatever it is you're wearing. You can hear a thump, like a heartbeat, the heartbeat of the festival itself, the thumping of the electronic pulse of the music. And as you open your eyes, you realize that while you can see the flashing of the neon lights, and the, uh, the various crackles of electronic energy from the festival, they seem very far away, very misty. The mist surrounds you. It's a little foggy, a little dusty. Something beyond just physical haze. And as you push yourself up into a sitting position and look around, you see off in the distance the flash of the festival, but it looks to be a mile away or more. You were there last you remember, but now it seems kind of far away and all around you in all directions except for that one is just dark mist. What do you see when you see the other three? What do you see when, when someone looks at you, as all of you look around, you see these other three strangers, what do they see when they look at you? I'm 
wearing all black and have um, what looks like permanent black makeup around on my face. Um, long black hair. Female. Cool, thank you. And the rest of you, what, what do they see? What, what do the others see when they look at you? I am very tall, six and a half feet tall, middle-aged. I'm basically playing myself, uh, <laughs> wearing a hoodie and desperately trying to figure out where my coffee is because God. <laughs> you had the coffee and it's, it's, it's gone. <laughs> Where'd my coffee go? Life really is not fair. <laughs> and Sharon or Mira, what 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 do other people see when they see you? Um, so Auntie Sharon is a 45-year-old um, white woman. Uh, she has pretty short, uh, usually fairly coiffed uh, blonde hair that uh, she's, she's looking like she's like internally like getting on her own self for maybe having one too many pina coladas. Uh, <laughs> and so her hair is not as coiffed as it normally, she's at a festival. So it's, she's definitely done some things. So it's a little spikier in places, but she's wearing like a bright green, um, like athleisure wear t-shirt with, um, like athleisure wear yoga pants um, that are black with like some colors along the side. She thought that would be very cute to come with her and nephews. Cool, thank you. Uh, Mira is um, short. She's in her 30s. She's got really, really long brown hair. Uh, she's Native American, uh, dark hair, dark eyes. Um, like baggy kind of uh, uh, pants um, and sandals, um, but more of like a, a wrap top that kind of flattens everything out. Um, and her goggles are normally set up on top of her head. They're like around her neck and she's just like, what, where are my cats? <laughs> cool so yeah the, as i said the four of you are uh, the four of you are looking around this is these are the, 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 the these are these are the companions uh that that you, uh, that you... Oh. well i'm not certain about the the wisdom of the coffee and and right next to you materializes a huge thing like a, a stein it's like a beer stein filled with coffee just materializes out of out of the uh out of thin air next to you that's a good start <laughs> and if you taste it it's delicious and unlike everything that you have tasted or or drank since you got to this festival it doesn't taste like dust <laughs> I need a good cup of coffee. <laughs> I, had, I only had to go to wherever the heck this is to get it. I don't know. I, I think I want to hear what you're asking before I ask for my heart's desire. Oh, you are smart. Oh, good. I do usually choose well. Apparently, I've chosen better than usual. And what are the rest of you? What would you like? What can I do for you? To know what I want. <laughs> well then. Have you been having a good time? Have you been enjoying me? My festival, that is. don't think I've seen you all before, but uh, I do hope that things, I, I do hope your, your visit has been, has been entertaining. 
enjoyable? I mean, so far it's been a hell of a ride. The only thing I really wanted, the only reason I came is because I want everybody to have a good time, stay safe, get out alive, you know, so they have stories to tell. I don't really know what you're wanting, so I want to hear too, but mostly if I could choose anything, that's what I would choose. That my little nieces and my nephews, they all come back just having a great time with good stories, all right? That, that's, that's what I want. These little kids, they don't know what they're doing. They're trying things they never tried. Life's an adventure, go do it. And I want everybody to come back okay. That's, that's all I want, that's all I want. It's a wonderful and noble desire. Thank you. So as to the nature of the favor, oh, and I, I suppose I should introduce myself. And you see in between the darkness yourselves and that, uh, that pulsating, an oasis of light. Uh, you see a shape start to coalesce. The uh, the mists weave together into it looks like a, a relatively young woman, relatively being you know uh, early twenties, and she shifts as you you know as as, as you look as she takes form. She shifts between being white, being black, being Asian, being indigenous, different types of hair, different uh, you know, different styles of, of her hair, different clothing. She shifts from like a belly dance garb to like a biker garb to like a sort of a road warrior type of survival garb to no garb at all, to body paint to sort of a flowy medieval fairy punk thing. And she says, I am catastrophe. And this is my home. We travel around and well, obviously you've been enjoying hospitality. Some people, unfortunately, they don't treat, they don't appreciate my hospitality. They abuse it. Normally, I have my holy fools to deal with the people who abuse hospitality or abuse our guests in obvious ways. This, she says, pointing over toward the, uh, toward the pulsating light, this unfortunately is a bit beyond their talents. So I was wondering if you could help me sort things out with them. And where she's pointing, you can see there's a, it's sort of like a large, almost a kind of a bubble cathedral sort of tent. Uh, it's arched out with spires constructed around it. And it's a green, sort of a, uh, aqua green, pulsating, coruscating uh, ball of light. And as you watch from the spires, those weave together into sort of a cord and the cord stretches out, rises up into a pillar and then stretches out into all directions. These, it's like banners or fingers or tentacles or bolts of lightning again like catastrophe herself the shape of those tendrils keeps shifting the more you look at it the different yeah each time you look each time you blink it looks a little bit different and so the the higher it gets in the air the more it reaches out uh, the more green energy it seems to be pulling from around catastrophe it said it's rising up out of uh out of that uh that green oasis and drawing energy from around the festival back in and back down catastrophe says as far as i can tell their intentions are not aligned but they are selfish and parasitic, and I will not have it in my home. 
could you please help me sort things out with them? Thank you. What do you do? This seems a little dangerous. How are we supposed to help you? You're the whole soul of this festival. How do you know we're the ones you need? I can tell that all of you have a certain affinity for energies and essences, uh, an unusual degree of affinity for that. As I said, my my holy fools can take care of physical problems. This these dangers are more metaphysical than physical. And ideally, there wouldn't be that dangerous, actually. I, I would hope that it would just be a matter of asking them to stop. However, I suspect that merely asking is not going to be enough. We've tried to be polite with them. So far, nothing has come of it. So you have already asked him to stop? Uh, asked it to stop well yes but my fools needed to ask verbally the rest of you well you have other talents if you didn't you wouldn't be here and you couldn't see me and we couldn't be having this conversation I will need my cats. <laughs> well, uh, were your cats at the festival or your cats at home? Oh, no, they follow me everywhere. OK. They're easy to spot. They're black with green tails. OK, so um, she says, oh, well, that should be simple enough. And next to you, <laughs> your, your cats kind of fade in looking very, very, very confused, like mom, mom. Mom, 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 what happened? Mom, what, ew, dust, ew, ew, ew. Mom. <laughs> How many cats do you have? Two. Okay, so yeah. For now. You now have, you, you now have your two cats. Perfect, oh, thank you. Oh, this will, this will help nicely to help your task. So when I'm ready to decide what my desire is, I'll let you know. Thank you. I like you. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And what do the rest of you do? Uh, just to clarify, uh, it sounded like we just came just ourselves, nothing in our hands or whatever. You had what you were wearing. Um, your possessions, there's on your sheet, there's gear carried. And there's possessions. Gear carried is what you have with you. Possessions, you could go back to your tent and get the things that are listed as possessions. Okay, I was just curious because Auntie Sharon totally has a giant bag that she keeps with her at all times. I wasn't sure if that would count as a thing she's wearing or a thing she's holding. So um, yeah. she would yeah. have to she doesn't have it. Yep, yeah, if, if it's something she'd have with her at all times, then she has it with you or you have it with you. And um, Carice, you have your uh, you have your very smartphone, and I know you've got some other gear listed there as well. Yeah, I'll definitely need to go back to camp for my uh, guitar and uh, tools, all my music equipment. Okay. How, how big a problem are we talking about? Like, is this a lot of people that are gonna get potentially hurt? Is this just a few people that need to be put back in line? What, like, how big is this festival comparative to how many people might be trying to stir up some trouble? Oh, it's only a few people, four or five, I believe. Well, that and the, that. She says again, gesturing to the, uh, that sort of, now that you're looking at it 
as I said, it, it changes shape the, when you look at it. But uh, now when, when, when she says that, that pillar now seems to be like, um, like a woman with long scarves, kind of whipping them out and drawing them back to her, you know, like, a, like a belly dancer with a, a scarf in each hand. And then it shifts back into that, uh, uh, the coil of energy, then it kind of shifts into something that's disturbingly inhuman with tentacles. And then it shifts back into uh, like, a, like a pillar of, uh, a pillar of lightning reaching out, crackling, and then again, it, it shifts. Those of you, well, all of you are familiar with uh, with both spirit and prime. <clears throat> the <clears throat> the spirit, the the uh, the spheres of, of of spirit and prime. Essentially, what you're seeing is an embodiment of of primal energy. It's some sort of a spirit entity, like like catastrophe herself, and that you can tell the more that you well, you, you the more that you look at it, you can feel. It's not only drawing energy from around the festival, it's kind of even pulling a little bit of energy from you. Not really enough to cause you problems, but you feel the pull drawing at you. And she says, I'm not sure that that has a name. Catastrophe level with me. This Festival has happened a lot of years. This is not the first year. How often does this entity show up? Is this an every year thing? Is this just a thing you must have to deal with with all the people and all the, the other things that come up in a festival or is this a first time thing? Well, we always do have a few entities piggybacking along. Those are to be expected, I, I suppose, when you have occasions when you have occasions such as these but this one this one's new and this said i've i've already had some of my people ask them nicely to stop and well it hasn't when you say new new for the festival or you or you've never encountered this before oh she they it's certainly new to the festival i've never seen it or felt it before i felt the tugging of 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 need in a way that that i've not felt in previous years and it's it's almost well and, and she kind of leans forward and starts rocking a little bit, starts going, it's almost like, it's like I need, I need more. It needs more, we need more, they need more. It's, I don't like needing this way. It needs too much. Is it me? Is it my need? Do I need too much? What do I need? She starts kind of looking off into the distance. I need everything. I need nothing. You may need to pet my, one of my cats. They're really good at helping with that need. That gets her attention and, and she she reaches a hand out. And what are your, who are your cats? What are their names? We've got uh, Lyra and Hillbilly. Uh, oh, and Hilly. Oh. Hilly to keep it short. Cool. So she reaches out to one of your cats. Here, Hilly. You had to introduce them. Here, Hilly. Mm -hmm. Is it okay? It's so sweet, you're so adorable. And she reaches out and, and Hilly kind of looks at mom. It's all right. Is this one okay? Goes over, sniffs her hand, rubs her face along, uh, along Catastrophe's fingers and starts purring. 
Okay. Okay. I think we can trust catastrophe guys. Now, can I trust you? Don't come between me and my coffee and we're golden. <laughs> that is the question, isn't it? Who can you trust and with what? Like I said, I just want everybody to have a good time and get out okay. So if you're on the side of that, then I'm on your side. That's, that's where I'm at. I've got you back. Well, thank you. And I appreciate it. And she, she calls, calls her Lyra. Lyra ex extends her other hand. Lyra, here, Lyra. And Lyra comes over, does the same thing. And oh, yeah, okay, feels good. And you notice that when, uh, that when the cats rub their faces along uh, Catastrophe's fingers, their fur kind of ripples. And uh, you, 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 you sense, Kind of a surge of life energy, a surge of vitality <clears throat> coming from uh, you know, coming from catastrophe and coming from the cats. And uh, eventually she they, she reaches down and, and strokes both of them and then stands up and says, Well, perhaps we can be here and the mists around you, <clears throat> uh, the mists kind of swirl around, almost a, in a uh, almost a uh, dust devil sort of vortex around you, swirling faster and faster and faster and darker and darker, and you fall back into that sleep that you had felt yourselves in, and. When you wake up again, you're 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 laying on your backs, but this time, you're laying on your backs on carpets, and where before you were laying on the you were, you were laying on kind of literally the cold hard dusty ground, uh, now you're laying on kind of warm carpeting, and the thumping heartbeat sound that you had heard and that you had felt is all around you. It's much, much louder. And when you open your eyes, you see the vault of a green lit tent arching over you. And you can tell that the sound, the thumping sound is not specifically in the tent, it's around the tent. In, within the tent is a much more a subdued, almost a kind of a chill mix. Actually, uh, Carice, you would totally recognize it as a chill mix. Uh, playing and you hear some whispered voices around you. As you open your eyes, you notice that you are laying in, um, is it a carpeted, area with cushions and pillows and things like that around and various clumps of people who are some of whom are laying uh, alone some of whom are snuggled up with each other some of them appear to be sleeping some of them definitely are not sleeping uh, some of them appear to be talking to each other or whispering to each other everything is aside from that the, the thump outside of the space things are very quiet and subdued here and it's you just feel this this atmosphere of comfort and lassitude. Um, and you kind of just want to lay there. It feels really good. What do you do? I would like to kind of sort of sample the energy to kind of sense if there's some sort of like Enchantment. I'm guessing that there's some sort of like calm slumber, like mind numbing thing going on. I don't know what sphere that would be though. Okay. Well, what what do you what do you do to check that? Um, I guess just kind of gently open my senses very carefully. <laughs> okay. So you're you're the the witch, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, you could. 
lay back, breathe deep, and open yourself up to these sensations of, yes, there is actually, actually perception plus awareness. Again, one, one die for every dot. Roll it against difficulty five. It's pretty easy. All right, so sound awareness and you said perception? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, aware, uh, uh, yeah, awareness and perception. Mm -hmm. Intense. Yep. <laughs> um, let's see here, I got a 10, a six, a nine, a three, and a four. I'm oh, yeah. Nine. Yep, and re-roll the 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely there's some sort of uh, it's 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 definitely an enchantment. What you can't exactly tell is whether this is something that's been cast by a human agency or whether this is something that's greater than human. But yes, there's definitely a an impulse being and an impulse. It's 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 like a settling, a soothing uh, charm that's been laid over this space. It's also, you can tell, kind of blocking out the sound from around there, you know, from uh, from outside. It's keeping the, keeping the, 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 uh, the sounds and the energies in this space limited to just this space and focused within just this space. And within this, just this space, everything is warm and soothing and peaceful. Okay. A lot more so than natural. Mm. Yes. I take a big old gump, gulp of coffee because I do not want to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, and Mira, your, your, two cats are, are, your two cats are now, who were just a few moments ago, you know, rubbing up against catastrophe are now crashed out, laying against you, cat sprawling. Okay, so I would, uh... I really don't like this. This is not cool at all. So I'm going to take my water bottle. And I'm just going to kind of starting with my cats because that's the best part of it. I'm going to just run around the room and spray everybody with water because it's way too chill in here. <laughs> Especially the ones that are doing a little bit more than cuddling. Okay, so so you get up and take your water bottle and start spritzing people. Okay, uh, what do the rest of you do? <laughs> well, while she's up and doing that, uh, are they anywhere near me right now, or they were in this other zone with me, but they aren't around me right this very second, right when we came back? Oh no, you're all you're all fairly together, not like right next to each other, but you're all within basically arms reach of each other. Okay, well, Auntie Sharon's gonna like dig her very long lacquered nails into her purse and find some like caffeine gum and just <laughs> to try to stay up and peppy. And she's gonna try to go uh, like connect with some people, see what's going on. Um, and do I kind of perceive this, this kind of like spell of a lull or whatever that, um, okay. Um, and can I tell, if it's catastrophe doing it to try to keep people feeling zen or uh is it hmm? is it the other one the other it's four? definitely not catastrophe doing this okay um so yeah i think i'm going to try to connect with whoever is nearest to me while i'm just like frantically chewing my caffeinated gum okay cool and Carice, what are you doing um can i would like to see if i can find out where the music is coming from um, if there's like electronics around mm -hmm. that I could maybe change it to some more energizing, uh, upbeat music. Yeah, you can, you take out your smarter phone and, and start, you know, da, 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 da. yeah, so that sound system, like right over there, um, looking around, you can see a speaker's mounted there, 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 there. Um, it's hooked up into a computer, a, lap, a little laptop that's over there. And of course, sure, hacking into this, no problem. Let's put on some Metallica. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> um, 
So I'm really concerned about this lulling music, this the seemingly uh, possibly not alive people, and this thing that is sucking energy uh, that's surrounding us. At least that is my impression of what's happening. So while this while Metallica is starting up, I want to start attaching my light, my my lights, my. Um, I'm sorry, my uh, LED lights, and I'm going to be like pulling people in, starting to get us dancing, get us moving. <laughs> we need to wake these people up. Cool. Nobody dies on our watch. <laughs> cool. Excellent. So, yeah, the, the, the music starts swirling, and, and you notice people start going and, and looking around, and what um, what those of you who are well, actually at this point, I'm guessing all of you are seeing this more or less. Uh, there are there's one woman in particular who is wearing a black skirt and nothing else, very long, have olive skin, very long, curly, uh, reddish hair, and she's like, "What? What?" And, and and she gestures to this like gigantic road warrior type dude with bald head and massive black leather dusty biker armor stuff who goes rushing over to the uh, uh, rushing over to the laptop uh, there's a kind of an androgynous person very very thin kind of you know very short uh, spiky hair who starts going and there's there's a woman with it with an acoustic guitar and she's just kind of looking looking over at them. She said, "What the fuck? What what's happening?" And the uh, said the the woman in the black skirt is like, "Make it no, everyone, please, please calm down. I'm I'm sorry. There's been a problem here, and we'll just what what are you doing?" She's looking at you who got up and started spraying people with water. Please, please don't do that. This is a place of peace and quiet and tranquility. And, and please turn, and, and she, you know, looks back over to the, uh, the the big road warrior dude who's like, and she's like, please make it stop. Meanwhile, the energy, the, the, the... actually I'll have you roll for this one. Um, so, Carice. You, let's see, what do you what do you have? What spheres do you have? I, it's been a little while since I looked at your you are the reality hacker, correct? Sorry, yeah, I have uh, forces, matter, mind, and prime. Okay, you can totally do this. So roll two dice. That's your that's your erite. Um, this is casual. Um, so basically, um, roll two dice and give me something of five, five or higher. Eight. Okay. So you got one eight? I have a seven and a one. Oh, so you got a seven and one. Okay, cool. So, yeah. You notice that the energy here has very distinctly shifted along with the music and that green kind of, that, that green tranquil thing is, is kind of starting to pulse pink. And all of you again are sensitive to energy, and, and you are all noticing the very distinct shift in tenor of the energy here. And it's definitely not tranquil anymore. Uh, I'm so. going to be helping this out by distributing this caffeine gum, and then like getting people who want it by saying there's a little something extra in there, and it's just caffeine. But they <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, just trying to get everybody to caffeinate a little bit. Uh, yeah, basically, the, the people who have been laying around very tranquilly are, are suddenly getting up, and some of them are going and, and heading for the exits, and a few of them are like, and over at one point, two people, no, four people who had been more than sleeping, um, kind of start writhing in this really intense, ecstatic, freeform um mosh pit sort of thing, just the four of them. Um, yeah, kind of an erotic mosh pit. Other people looking over at them go and join into the erotic mosh pit and 
what little clothing there was starts um, dropping and flying in various directions. This all looks consensual. Looks, maybe. Nobody doesn't seem to be enjoying it. Um, other people are kind of starting to nod a little bit with the music and some people are starting to get up and what, what? What? And, you know, with, with you, Mira, spraying water on them, some, some people are like, ah, stop, stop. But others are like, oh, thank you. More. Thank you. Because <laughs> it is, you know, dry and dusty out here, even though it's not particularly hot being night. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, and the, 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 the road warrior type guy is, he's like, pulling the cord out of the computer and it's the music is still going <laughs> and he's like i don't know <laughs> and she's like we'll make it make it stop sirene i don't know how to make it stop it shouldn't be going in the first place it should be off and <clears throat> so the okay can I do a, a check? Because you were saying that this uh, erotic mosh pit is seems consensual. Mm -hmm. Is there a way for me to see if there's like a magic happening? If it's just that kind of green magic shifting? If this is just the way it's going? Or like make sure that people are doing this because they actually want to do it? Because I mean, I want to check out the redhead to see if she's connected to this green energy. But I'm more, Auntie Sharon's more concerned about like making sure everyone's going to have a good safe time. Um, so I want to check out to see if this actually is consensual. Is there a way I can check that? Yes, uh, just perception plus awareness. Yeah, that would be your perception plus awareness. And just yeah, six or higher. I accidentally just closed. As the music shifts, it gets a little less frenetic, but much more intense in the in the mosh pits. Did you get any successes there? Or? Sorry, I accidentally closed my sheet. Oh, okay. While she's doing that, can I just stop the music? Yeah. Yep. You can. You can totally do that. And then observe the, the what happens. Stops. And perception yeah. anything above a, a five, right? For a yeah. Or six, yeah, six or higher. Okay, so I've got uh, a one six and a ten that I'm re-rolling. Uh, so two successes. Okay. Uh, yeah, they all seem they all seem into it. It seems to be them. It doesn't seem like they're being compelled in any way. But yeah, and the music stops, and then people are like, oh, a, a number of people just start, oh. No, bring it back. And and uh, the, the 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 road warrior guy is like, oh, finally, and he goes over to one of the speakers and he un he just yanks the cable out, not like breaking it, but you know, taking it out of the uh, out of the socket and so forth. And people, are, one person's like, no, no, bring it back. That was awesome. And and the woman in the skirt is like, everybody, I'm sorry. I really, I, I'd like to invite you to return to a place of peace and contentment, or perhaps to, if you, if you wish to take the dance elsewhere, I welcome that. I, I am perfectly okay with, the, with you doing that. I just invite you all, and you with the water bottle over there, I invite you to take that. As much as I do appreciate that that is a, that's a very good and compassionate thing to do. It's very dusty in here. And in fact, could you spray me a little on that, of that on me, please? There you go. You spray her with it. She's like, oh, yeah. oh, that feels good. Oh, that feels wonderful. Thank you. And uh, your cats, meanwhile, are <laughs> following you, looking, look, looking like, Mom, what the absolute hell? <laughs> what are you doing? Why water? <laughs> uh, and so, you know, a few people are still, yo, bring, bring Metallica back. 
and some other people are starting to like lay down and, and so forth again. But the, 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 the energy, that pulse that felt very unified when you first came out of this feels very disrupted and, and not chaotic in a dangerous way, but it, it just dispersed. You kind of took the momentum and you broke it up. And the, uh, the woman in the skirt says, uh, so everyone, again, I apologize. I'm so sorry for the, uh, I'm so, so sorry about the, 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 the technical interruptions. If you want to take, well, to take that energy elsewhere, the festival is full of that. That would be wonderful. This is a place for quiet and for relaxation. Those of you who wish to remain and, you know, and be quiet, this, you know, you're still welcome to do that. This state, this is still safe space for everyone. And I just ask that if, if you, uh, if you remain, that you keep the energy settled and quiet so we can all relax. Thank you. Mira, what do your cats think of her? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> I was I was gonna go talk to her for a second. Does anyone want to do this? I'm not sure if she'll she'll like me after I sprayed everybody with water. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> you seem like an older lady. Older lady, the older lady. We seem to get things done. It's fine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go over and um, and talk with her, and also just kind of investigate her to see if she is part of this green being that's kind of. Like if she's trying to be like a, a pillar of that power that's kind of like working like a Wi-Fi antenna almost to like amplify the signal here or um, or if she's connected to it at all or if it's like a lot of festivals have like a quiet tent so you can go and you can like, if you're having a bad trip or if you're just overstimulated, you can go and kind of calm down a little. So trying to figure out which which is which is which for this one. Okay, so what what are you doing to do that? Are you just you're talking? Are you are you looking? What what is? How are you trying to, to find these things out? Uh, I'm gonna come up to her. Uh, I'm gonna be talking in uh, my normal tone, which is very loud. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm so sorry. I completely misread that. I love what you're doing here. I love <laughs> keeping everybody safe and giving everybody a good environment to calm and relax and chill. I am so very grateful. Uh, I'm curious, like, how did you get into this? What can, can I do anything to help you, honey? Is that, I know it's, it got a little crazy there, but you know, it's a festival. We gotta let kids be kids um, and just come up and talk to her. <laughs> okay, cool. She seems very welcoming. She's like, could I, could I invite you to, to please come over here? I just, I want to keep the, uh, I appreciate your exuberance. That's I think that's wonderful. That's beautiful that, that you, you bring such as such you bring such powerful energy to to this. And just could we go over here and talk um, away from the rest of the uh, away from the rest of the group to keep things a little quieter? Because I, I I would gladly talk to you more about this. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I talking loud? I didn't think I was talking. This is just my normal voice. I don't really have a whisper. This is pretty much as low as I go. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll, I'll take her over to the side. I don't know if I can roll something to see if there's like a magical aura around her. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's with catastrophe. Maybe she's one of those people she was talking about that um, she has kind of infiltrated throughout the festival to help her or something else. Okay. Well, one of the, the one of the first <clears throat> one of the first things you notice, and Mira, you notice this too, is this person is practically crackles with energy. That uh, it, when you're trying to perceive that energy, that she's a charisma bot, um, and that that green energy that you had sensed, yeah, she's she is again crackling with it. It's it's like a, almost like an electronic field around her. When you get close to her, you can feel that your your cats, uh, Mira, definitely feel a little weirded out by that because you know it makes their fur stand on end and they're kind of like, um, that doesn't feel good. Um, stand in between my feet while I'm trying to walk to stay close. Uh, yeah, uh, but. At the same time, what you're getting from her energy isn't like malice. 
it's not like you know strike you down you know scary witch energy it's like almost almost uncontrolled uh it's she, she's very she's clearly she's very very powerful but she doesn't seem from your perceptions to have a lot of control over that power could i like um give her some water but maybe tr have it so it tricks her into telling us about what's going on here to kind sure. of encourage the conversation well you could try that because you're the shaman correct mm -hmm. okay so in offering her uh, in offering her some water let's see do you have mine i think you do uh, have what uh the sphere of mind i do not have the spirit of mind have spirit i of have mind. spirit uh correspondence entropy and forces yeah that um i have the sphere of mind i might be able to do something with that maybe Aww. okay if you if you if you tell each other what you have in mind literally okay <laughs> <laughs> here's here's the water bottle it has something to help okay uh, so uh noticing this crackling off of her um i'm definitely gonna get my voice like a little extra excited so a little extra loud so we definitely go all the way out from the middle of uh -huh. the secluded area. So if something goes down, we don't have a lot of people watching or anything that way, because that's a big no-no. Um, so um, uh, I just, I love what you're doing here. I just love your whole aura. It's so, you look like you're parched. You really, that whole getting spritzed in the face, that's not a really, that only works if you're super dehydrated. And I'm all about hydration here. My friend has some extra water. Would you like some water, sweetie? Let me keep taking care of everyone else, and someone has to take care of you. Who's taking care of you, honey? Who's taking? Oh, care of you? oh, I have, I, I have my, uh, I have my people here. They can, and you notice that the, um, um, you notice that the 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 woman who had the acoustic guitar and the androgynous person are following the three of you out. The big road warrior dude is still pulling out cables so that something like that doesn't happen again, you know, with the music. Uh, in the meantime, Hex, Carice, what are you all doing? I was kind of just, uh, I was thinking I would be watching as uh, Auntie Sharon is talking with her, <laughs> just to kind of, because I'm guessing I would my character have also spotted the crackling green energy? Yeah. I'm trying to get an idea of is this is this person being filled with the energy like is she collecting it or is it is it um, someone is imbuing her with it and using her. Okay, um, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, how many how many dots do you have in prime. I have two. Okay, so um, roll your uh, perception plus awareness. Let's see here. Perception plus awareness. And then with these, is it? How do I calculate successes? I forget that part of the rule. Oh, it's uh, so it's, well, on this one we'll say well, difficulty six. So anything is six or higher. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, I have uh two eights and a nine, so three successes. Okay. <laughs> uh, she is as far as you can tell, she's the focus of it. That she has. It's almost like she's been collecting the energy, like like she's kind of the 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 point of the uh, the point of the V, if you're using poly terms. Um, she she's essentially been. It's not like she's collecting it, like taking it, but she is where the energy is flowing to. Okay. Sort of like a battery. Yeah. Okay. And Carice, what are you doing? Does the um, the person with the guitar is she still holding it? Yes, and it, yeah, it's an acoustic guitar. She's still holding it. The way she's holding it, because you're a musician, also you get the impression that this guitar is important to her. Like she's not just going to set it aside. Now she's she's holding it. She's holding it like it's important. Okay. And she's you know, walking. Uh, walking rather rapidly toward uh toward them and 
I'm going to try to distract her uh, by talking about the guitar with her and walking with her. Okay, cool. So you just go up and, hey, that's a beautiful, you know, Martin, whatever model sort of, uh, you know, sort of thing. What do you, what do you do? Um, hey, I was just, your, your guitar is so awesome. Can I hear you play a little bit? Oh, hey, that, that would, that would be neat. Um, I, I really need to, to catch up with them though. Um, but yeah, I, I gladly talk music shortly once we kind of, you know, that, that whole thing with the music, that whole thing with the, the metallic and everything. I mean, that was neat and all, but, but I've really got to make sure that everything is, is, you know, stays, everything gets back to order here and then I'd be glad to. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm a musician too, and I really like guitars and I just keep walking with her and just keep <laughs> okay. going. Cool. So it's like all of you all are going <laughs> at this point, the, the, the big, um, the big road warrior guy notices that everybody else is heading that way. So he starts heading that way also uh, off to the side. The, the, the amorous mosh pit has settled down and is now kind of a, an amorous puppy pile. Um, <laughs> and some other people are kind of like moving, moving toward it with a sort of a tentative, either can I join? I don't want to just reach in. One or two people are kind of reaching in and getting essentially pulled into uh, pulled into it. And there's uh, a f there there are a few people who are just like, "That's neat. I haven't seen that position before. I didn't know you could do that with five people." Um, and <laughs> other folks are either, you know, returning to sleep or just deciding, eh, you know, that was fun and going back out to the festival. Uh, all of you, again, because you're, you're, uh, you're familiar with, uh, with, with the energies here, you're noticing that, again, that, that energetic pillar has sort of dissipated and is now going out the side with the, uh, with the woman in the black skirt. Um, however, all of you make a an additional perception plus awareness roll, um, difficulty eight. Perception but awareness, you said? Four dice? Yeah. If yeah. we have like four dots or? Yeah, if you have four, if four dots is four dice, uh, you know, if you're, if the total is, is perception, if you have four in perception and then like three in awareness, it would be a total of seven dice. One success. You got one. It was a, a you, Max. number Sorry. eight. You said, yeah, eight, yeah. Those no successes. Uh, got one success and one yeah. fail, so. Okay, so no successes. And Mira, what about you? I had no success. Okay. Sorry, um, yeah. did you say six or higher? I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, eight or higher. Eight or higher, okay, no. This thing okay. is really important. Can I pop a willpower and throw another die in there? Is that okay? Yep. Well, willpower gives you an automatic success. So you get two successes. So yeah. Uh, Sharon, you you notice as you're as you're walking, you notice that there's something nagging behind you about the about the energy. There's just some you have this feeling that you've missed something. And you turn back around. What do you do? Yeah, she, you 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 had this you had this sensation that wait a minute what and you turn back around and you can't off you can't immediately see what you might have missed it's not like there's somebody you know standing behind you with an axe or anything but you just get this feeling of something you missed back there and you were walking away from it and the rest of you noticed that Sharon, who was talking animatedly to the uh, to the woman in the uh, in the skirt, uh, has suddenly stopped and turned around. What's the rest of the not our group, but what's the the woman in the skirt and the the everybody just calm down? What are they doing? Oh, okay. So the woman in the skirt was walking with Meredith and was was leading you all out of the tent. I mean, after after we see Sharon turning around, what are the rest of that group doing? Are they still oh. going in that direction, or did 
or they, they, they start they start walking then when she stops they stop and the woman in the skirt says oh was there something oh are you all right and she says to uh, to sharon and the big road warrior type type guy noticing that suddenly because he was taking up the taking up the rear behind the rest of you stops and noticing that the rest of you have suddenly turned around and are basically looking at him go you know Uh, I'm gonna respond to the woman and just uh, you know that feeling like you left the stove on or the garage <laughs> open. I'm getting that feeling right now, and you seem very attuned to energy. Do you feel anything? Like I just feel like something's something's just I miss something. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> nice. So the rest of you can make rolls again. Uh, this time, because because Sharon has pointed it out, uh, you, you do, <clears throat> because Sharon has pointed it out, this time it's difficulty five. Because now you know to, to look for something. Now I get an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Two successes here. Okay. I got five successes. Cool. Got three. So this time out, after she says that, <clears throat> you notice that there are at the four cardinal points of the tent, and each point, there's like a kind of a green jade-ish, and it's clearly not actual jade. Uh, each one about this tall, a Buddha statue. All of them different types of uh, all in different types of Buddhas. You know, one of them is the conventional lotus position. You know, like this. Uh, one of them is like a dancing Buddha. Uh, one of them has like six arms and looks like some sort of strange war Buddha. Uh, and <clears throat> and one of them is throwing is is throwing back his head um, in what could be a laugh or could be a scream. And what you all notice? Oh, sorry, good. Oh, I was gonna keep keep going, keep going. I'll say something when you're done. Sorry. Uh, what what you all notice is that now that you're looking with your metaphysical sight, you notice that all four of those Buddhas are glowing green. Very, very faintly, you know, it's not like, hi, fucking neon Buddha here. Uh, but it's, there's a, there's a green pulse in each of those, in each of those Buddha statues. All right. So Sharon's going to look at her and go, so I don't want to, how did the kids say it? I don't want to put anyone on blast, but I want to make sure everyone's having a good time. And something about this feels like appropriation. I'm, I'm really oh. concerned about these, these little statues. So I'm wondering... Can we do something about that? Because I feel like there are some people that really uh, that really connect with this, and I feel like we're making a mockery of it. Is there a way we could? Oh, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have mind, correct? Do you have mind? Uh, what's your what What is your mind? I have one dot in mind. Oh, okay, so yeah, you wouldn't be able to actually. But however, you have. Um, Let's see, you're the healer, right? Yeah, so I have um, uh, one in entropy, three in life, and uh, two in time and two in spirit, and then one in mind. Yeah, this would be more of a social thing. Hmm. Man, I've got three in correspondence. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want? Oh, there we go. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, you're manip manipulative persuasion. Oh, hell yes. Um, and I'm a real fast and smooth talker. Uh huh. So I would love to get some more information about where you got those amazing <laughs> Buddha statues. <laughs> hey, you're gonna double team the uh, double team the woman in the skirt. <laughs> Absolutely, weeping. That's our that's our jam. Nice. So she in, initially when when you know when when she says appropriate, she goes, oh no, those are those are, and she kind of starts just, just stumbling over this whole new age explanation as to why it's actually okay that a woman who is, as far as you can tell, Italian, um is 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 feels it's it's perfectly okay to be using these Buddha statues, really. Um, but she's obviously stumbling over it because you hit a nerve. Um and especially because Mira, your first nation, she doesn't want to contradict you. So she's just kind of stumbling. And the 
two of you start just essentially wrapping her up in conversational, um, uh, like a conversational maypole. And between the two of you going and she's ah, that, 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 and, and you just essentially got her tongue tied, completely confounded. Um, Hex and Carice, what are you doing? I'm one, I'm very much enjoying the show. <laughs> and two, I'm keeping an eye on Mad Max over there just to make sure that he's not uh, sneaking up or something. I want to kind of get a sense of like, what are they doing? Are they chill? Are they? Um, he seems kind of, he seems tense, but he doesn't, he seems like he doesn't want to do anything. The, uh, the woman with the guitar actually agrees with, uh, with Sharon and Mira and starts um, kind of gently, but, but emphatically chewing out the woman with the skirt. Um, looking at her a bit more carefully, it looks like she's, she's possibly, possibly South American, possibly Middle Eastern, possibly Romani, you're not really sure, but dark, darkish, darkish skin, really, really thick, long brown hair. Um, and not Asian, uh, but she's like, you know, wow, you're right. She, she says something like, you know, Sirene, I told you those were a bad idea. You know, I thought we, we should. And, and, and meanwhile, the, um, uh, the the androgynous looking uh, the androgynous looking person it's kind of looking around at the bunch of you and looking at the puppy pile over there and just shrugs and goes over and joins the puppy pile which happily accepts them i'd like to try to put on some john philip souza <laughs> okay uh can can sharon inter see to really quick is that a thing would that be okay or is it kind of just going right now and just leave it <laughs> and the the road warrior site the, the road warrior sort of guy is just kind of going and he's looking at the speakers he's like what the what the, what the fuck? And he's running around. This should this shouldn't be happening. This shouldn't be happening. Why does what's going on here? And all of you notice off to the side, catastrophe. Like <laughs> thoroughly enjoying the show. So you see, Bluetooth tech, dude. <laughs> so uh, Sharon, you said you wanted to intercede. How and with whom? Yeah. So uh, I didn't. I want to kind of stop it and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I wasn't looking for a mistake. None of us can say we haven't been pulled in by something that wasn't us because we were really attracted to it. We thought it resonated with it, if we could make it okay. But we're going to fix it. Attacking people does not fix the problem. So we're going to fix the problem, okay? So we're going to put these statues somewhere else. We're going to get rid of them. We didn't know it was a problem before. If you thought it was a problem and you didn't speak up, that's okay. Now you'll know for the future. We're gonna get rid of these statues, but we do not need to attack this woman who was just trying to create a very nice atmosphere for people and did not know better. We're going to educate and change. So let's let's get together and let's let's fix the problem. Okay, let's let's do this together. We don't need to turn on each other. It's not okay. Ooh, I know, Auntie Sharon, I know a couple, uh, I have a couple friends who are Buddhists that would really love these statues. And as I'm trying to engage Auntie Sharon and uh, this lovely Italian or uh, European woman um, in this conversation, uh, Lyra and Hilly are coming up and uh, trying to get as close as they can to her staticky form but trying to get between her legs and and trip her up a little <laughs> bit <laughs> she she kind of she kind of really she's just really obviously flustered when the cats come down she says oh and she goes she goes to pet them and and they're kind of like is, she, is, it, is it okay and you're like mom what's with her it's auntie sharon's idea just keep going 
So they'll, they'll kind of just like tentatively go up and nudge her skirts and so forth. And she reaches down to, she reaches down to pet them and they move away. And, and, and Lyra definitely bites a finger, I think. <laughs> okay. And let's see. So the, so the road, the road warrior guy is, is like taking, grabs one of the, grab, grabs one of the, 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 the amplifiers and he takes it and he's, he's holding it up. This thing's got to weigh, this thing's got to weigh at least 150 pounds. He's got it at arm's length, but stop that shit. And obviously it keeps, it, obviously it keeps going. He goes back over to the laptop and he, he's like unplugged the laptop. He's like, shut down, shut down, shut down. Oh, that's, that's precious. <laughs> Um, Any change in the puppy pile? Well, it's the first time you've ever seen people do that to the Star Spangled Banner. Make a, uh, a perception plus awareness roll, uh, Curies. Uh, yeah, perception plus awareness. Oh, oops, yeah, I forgot to say, Dif sorry, difficulty, dif difficulty six. One success. <sighs> yeah, that puppy pile is definitely generating some energy and definitely focusing some energy. It's completely understandable that that's focusing some energy, but it seems to be a, maybe like the focus of the energy in the tent has gone from the flustered woman in the skirt to the puppy pile. I have an idea. Um, would it be possible for my character to subtly try to kind of shunt a little bit of that energy away from the puppy pile and wherever it's going over to catastrophe? Sure, you could try. Um, do you, you have, um, well, how much do you have in prime and how much do you have in spirit? Uh, prime two spirit one. It's, uh, sorry, two, two spirit, and you said one prime, one prime, or no, two prime, one spirit. Okay. Uh, so let's see. You can try. Uh, she's obviously there. What do you? What are you going to do to to, uh, to facilitate that? I am behind. Uh, behind the scenes, I'm a witch, so bodily yeah. fluids is one of the things. I'm going to kind of lightly gouge my palm with a fingernail kind of behind my back. So it's not like super out in the open, but I'm going to kind of use a little bit of that to kind of try and get a little bit of oomph to it. Okay. So you're going to like try and bleed on them or are you going to bleed on her? Or are you going to bleed on them and then go over and touch her or how do you want to do that? I'm thinking, um, I'm trying to do this without bringing a lot of attention to myself. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of um, let the blood drops kind of hit some of the dust in the ground mm -hmm. um, with the intention of like having just the general aura of the place, like have a little tiny, tiny trickle. Okay. I'm I guessing totally the energy is kind of... Okay. Yeah. Mira, what do you want to do? So I've been eyeing this big bald guy for a little while now. I could totally take him. I mean, I'm totally, I'm like five foot. <laughs> I think I need to arm wrestle this guy. Like this guy, me and I got this. <laughs> I totally got this. Come on, Baldy, let's go. Oh, that's, uh, that's awesome. What, what are you, what are you going to do? Cause again, he's, he's got the, the speaker. What are you going to do to get his attention? Um, Man, man, Baldy, those are some pretty big arms. I bet I could take take you in an armless wrestling contest. You want to come and test it out? Oh, hey, that would that would be awesome. But like right now, I I got to I got to make this music stop. You know, I I got to take care of the temple. You know, I'm a I'm a great fast talker, and some of the you know I'm just really super charismatic, apparently. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, man, that looks yeah. that looks like a lot of work. Wouldn't you rather? <laughs> I just got yeah. Uh, yeah, I I'm, got I'm, some yeah, uh, some water over here. Man, I bet I could even scrounge up a big, uh, nice cold beer for you 
if I just do a little digging into that uh, anti uh, anti Sharon's bag. So come on, we can sit down, relax. I'll totally, totally cream you at arm wrestling. Cool. So yeah, um, roll manipulation plus subterfuge, which is a total of seven dice and re-roll any tens. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't can I tell. Because she's pulling from oh, my six. Bag. Is there anything I can do to help if she needs it? Nine, six. Oh, I forgot to say five. this again. Yeah, sorry, difficulty is four. Okay, nine, six, four, five, and seven. Oh yeah, hell yes. He just he's just like, sure. He just draw he doesn't even put the amplifier down. He's just like, fine. He just throws the amplifier. He's like, that would be cool. And um he goes to like put his arm around your shoulder, not like in a grabby sort of way, but just in a, like in a buddy buddy sort of way. Yeah, yeah, great. Let's go. Let's go. Cool. So yeah, he's like, yeah, that, you know, that'd be awesome. You know, this fucking temple, man, it's, it's just so, this is just. The temple. He's, yeah. He's like, this the temple, the temple of tranquility. He says, you know what? I, I'll be honest with you. He's like, I'm so fucking bored. This place, you know, I, I serene means well, you know, and he just like mm -hmm. starts just mouth. Blabbing. Yeah. But he's, he's blabbing. Um, huh. He's just. As, as he goes, I'll get back to the, the, the rest of you in a second here. Just, as, as he goes with you to go sit down and get the water and, and arm wrestle, he just kind of unleashes, not in, a, in an angry way, but in a man, it's a relief to talk to somebody who gets it sort of way about basically he was trying to do a good thing here, but he's been bored out of his mind and he is really tired of babysitting, uh, babysitting, babysitting trust fund kids and, and IT losers who make more in an hour than he makes in a year. Uh, Man, and he's just thing. really, really tired of it. And good thing I found you, buddy. Yeah, he's like, you know, you get it. You get it. You understand. it's Because he just absolutely, totally thinks you are his new best bud. Oh, man, so cool. So cool. Okay. <laughs> so while they're, while they're going, what are the, the other three of you doing? Uh, again, Cyrene is, Cyrene is, is, is just so flustered at this point, she seems to be at a complete loss for words. She keeps trying to pet the cats and without tripping over them and fails at that. Her team is splitting in different directions. Um, and there's a bunch of people having sex over in the, over in the, not even the corner. It's kind of like starting to move. It's not really in the middle of things, but it's off to the side. And it's, it's a lot bigger than five people at this point. It's closer to like 12. Um, if you stop to count the limbs, um, and, but she has been so knocked off her game by all the, by the cultural appropriation thing and by her team, um, dropping everything to go do something else that she just seems to be, blah, 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 blah. um, realizing that, the, that, that basically, you know, showtime's over the woman with the guitar has started talking to you, Carice, and started talking instruments. It's just like, you know. Uh, yeah, this is this is bullshit and she's just again um kind of going yeah let, let's go over here yeah sure let's 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 jam and she she sit, sits down you know off to the side do you still have the john philip Sousa playing um no i'm gonna go ahead and and stop that okay do you want to change that to different music or are you just going to turn the music off entirely I think I'm just going to turn it off. Okay. So yes, the music go the, the music goes off. Uh, the primary soundtrack appears to be the um, the cluster over there, uh, and the woman who with the with with the uh, the guitar who introduces herself introduces herself as Fox uh, sits down and starts playing. She's really good, actually, uh, and. <clears throat> The big guy who introduces himself as Trainwreck uh, sits down uh, and says, "Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's do it." So you've got life, as I recall, <laughs> which means that with your um, you can because you're the shaman, correct? I I am, but I don't have life. Oh, that's right. It's the witch who has life. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, you can, you can still, uh, what's your strength? Um, I, I, my spheres or my your strength, just physical strength. Okay. Uh, two, two, yep. Two in strength. Yep. It's but, so, yeah. But I, part of my fast talking, isn't that an instrument to how I kind of boost myself up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll, t you, I'll tell you what you can do um, because let's check, check your spheres here and see if there's something magically that you can do to mm. win an arm wrestling contest. I have. Oh, you've got, oh, you got a really strong athletics. That I do. I have and... more. <laughs> yeah entropy oh forces yeah yeah you could you could um using your conversation and you're winning him over and basically you building your spirit up off of uh off, off of everything you can uh essentially i'll say that you can you can get the um physics the forces of physics to work in your favor so that basically when you put your arm there it becomes like the immobile object nice so uh roll your arete i think that is it uh you have two three, three. yeah three three dice um three dice difficulty six eight yeah. and six <laughs> yeah he, you you set your arm up there and he's pushing and he's pushing and he's straining and he's talking and the two of you are talking to each other and your arms are just like he can't budge you it's awesome <laughs> so andy sharon what are you doing uh so i'm going to be trying to calm uh this um What's, what's her name? Did I ever get her name? I heard other people saying it. I think it's... Oh, the woman, uh, uh, Cyrene. Cyrene. Uh, okay, so I'm going to take my, my long, lacquered red nails, and I'm just going to, like, rub them on her back in, like, concentric circles, like, hey, honey, it's okay. We oh. learn from our mistakes. We just need to get this fixed, okay? How can we get these statues moved somewhere so that way they are not part of this festival and they do not uh they do not become a thing that gives somebody a bad time how, how do we do that how do we make that happen okay so let's see i think if i recall correctly that you could probably use the scratching her back as a uh I mean, I figured the way that Auntie Sharon does her magic. Is oh, you're like, persuasive. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, she talks with her hands a lot. And then those are kind of like little extra magic wands off the end of each finger. Kind of thing that <laughs> she just kind of does this and doesn't even really think about it. So between her fast talking and her acrylic nails, she kind of can cast some spells that way. Cool. That's a good idea. Um, so yeah, just uh, roll your manipulation plus empathy. That's a total of seven, seven dice. Um, Difficulty five. One, two, three, four, five, six successes at a second. Oh yeah, okay. So when you start when when you start scratching her back and talking to her and stuff, she just starts crying. Like like in a release sort of way. She just she's like she, she just, she starts to, her, her lips start and then she just her kind of stumbles, uh, not stumbles, rather, but folds and she just kind of leans into that and just starts sobbing. And she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I meant, I meant, well, I was trying to do a good thing. I was trying to do it. I was, I was trying to help people. I just, all I want to do is help people. Irene, I get where you're coming from. And the crying's not going to help it. We got to move this stuff out. I know you just want to cry. I know you had good intentions, but crying doesn't help anybody. Action does. So let's get going. Let's move these things around. Let's get them out of here. You're, make, you're insulting people more by the crying than by just removing the problem. You know, <laughs> you're making things better by doing rather than crying. You're not a victim. Okay. 
you are a strong woman and you meant well, and that's fine, but we got to fix a problem. So let's fix it. Let's go. Come on, get yourself together. Let's go. And I'm just going to keep trying to get her to move these statues or find somebody. Oh yeah. She goes, she goes over. She's just listening to you. She is absolute putty in your hands. She goes over to each one of, <clears throat> goes over to each one of the statues, uh, does a, uh, and it does it does a bow and she thanks the statue thanks the, the each of the associated buddhas some of them you haven't heard of including the, this the she says the the screaming buddha um she thanks them for their help she thanks them for for understanding she apologizing she apologizes for for having been um you know for work for having uh, presumed uh, to ask things from them and so forth. And she essentially, which you can tell energetically what she's doing is she is breaking the connection that was binding all of these things together. And she is separating the energy from, the, uh, from, uh, from them. The energy is remaining in the, uh, in the Buddhas as they're almost like batteries. And you notice as this is all going on, those spires that you saw around outside that the, the energy was winding around each one of them corresponds to one of the uh, the cardinal points. They weren't attached to the Buddhas, but you can extrapolate where this was headed. And Cyrene takes each Buddha down in turn, and essentially, while other while the rest of you are doing other stuff, she breaks the uh, she breaks the energetic net that was that was pulling the energy together and focusing it out and then drawing it back in. Um, and uh, in, 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 in response to your, uh, to your persuasion. And Carice, what are you doing? Um, I'm gonna ask um, the woman with the guitar if I can try her guitar out. Um, oh yeah, sure. And also uh, just kind of wanna notice what's happening with the puppy pile, see if mm -hmm. anything's changing. Um, you notice that while it's definitely enthusiastic, once those statues have been moved or removed really, and the, the, the ritual holding everything together, that the intensity, the energetic intensity starts subsiding into something that you would normally just expect from a group of people having very enthusiastic and still apparently consensual sex. They, the people in the puppy pile seem to be having, as far as you all can tell, seem to be having a great time, but there's, it's not pulling, it's not pulling energy from or into them any, any longer. It, with the, the, the energy involved is now just what a group of people involved in, you know, tantric energies would be generating to begin with. So I'm just going to. Um, play something fun cool and hex what are you doing now that the puppy pile is kind of stopped generating or taking in energy um i'm gonna kind of wander over to um <clears throat> uh sirene because is my character close enough to have overheard kind of some of that i just wanted to help kind of oh thing? yeah yeah she she's not being quiet about it <laughs> So I go over her to oh go over to her and say you know like I know you didn't do this intentionally it sounds like you you again your heart was in the right place um, what were you trying to help with I may have some ideas on how you can still help but in a way that's not going to upset folks uh, she says well she says when I came when I first came to to catastrophe. She says, I just had a really bad breakup and, and, you know, I, 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 I was kind of careless and, and then I, I met this person and, and, and she helped me focus my, she helped me focus my intentions a little, a little better and a little stronger so that, um, so that, that I could help hold space for people who were in a situation like I was, people who came to catastrophe because they were hurting or because they were lonely or because they were scared. And I wanted to bring the people who were lonely and hurting and scared together. And, and we could just soothe those needs and, 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 and just 
gentle the the the, the pain and, and the cravings and just help them leave feeling more refreshed and 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 settled and and it was working i think it sounds like i'm sure it sounds like a really noble intention so i'm gonna I, are you okay if i level with you a little bit have a little bit of a, a frank talk with you yes thank thank you that that would be good so your heart was in the right place but one of the things when you're trying to help is you kind of need to make sure that the way you're helping is actually the way that the people you're trying to help need and are open to kind of that full consent thing so one thing i can't help but notice is that you made this but i haven't heard you mention that it was okay with the catastrophe festival it sounds like something the catastrophe festival would really love to have i mean obviously we want a place that's a sanctuary for people to be safe to kind of recover you know festivals a lot of wild things can happen so what are your thoughts about maybe partnering with the Catastrophe Festival to figure out a way to do this that's congruent with the festival and the culture of the festival? Because there's, you know, there's a vibe, there's a spirit to this kind of thing. And you just kind of need to match it. That would be a really good idea. Thank you. I, would, I, I wonder, I should probably talk to one of the Holy Fools and right, right around that time, Catastrophe herself, comes up this time she's not shifting through the various different guises this time she actually looks kind of a lot like Cyrene, not like a mirror image of Cyrene, but but same basic you know ethnic same uh type same body type uh also wearing just a skirt and some body paint and she's like hi i i heard a lot about your uh about your tent and i think he's right you know let's let's talk about that and and she she's like you know mate May I do a heart salutation with you to the uh, to to Cyrene and, and Cyrene like yes that would be good and you see the two of them um, uh, catastrophe extends her hand over to um, uh, Cyrene's sternum and cover and and Cyrene extends hers over to um, to catastrophe as they place their hands over one another and all of you notice this just energetic hum of synergy and harmony and calm settle over both of them. And they hug and uh, catastrophe Lee puts her hand, uh, puts, puts her arm around um, uh, around Cyrene's shoulder and they both walk off. And as, as they're walking off, catastrophe looks over and just catches the, the graze of all four of you. And she's like, you're good. Let me know what I can do for you. Thank you. I mean it. Thank you. And she leads Cyrene off. Um, Kyrie, you're talking with Fox, and the two of you are having a great conversation about music. Um, Mira, you and Trainwreck are still. What? What are you, are you doing? Anything further? Currently, you're 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 still like this. Well, after yeah. I uh, watched them walk off, I kindly let him keep me and then, <laughs> of course and then i um you know uh nudge auntie sharon about that beer and hmm. why don't we all sit back and have a cold one for all this hard wa work we just did man that was a lot and of course my cats lyra and hilly come in come and snuggle yeah. up next to me uh, cool and sharon what do you do uh, well, I absolutely pull out a couple of cold beers from my purse because why wouldn't I have that? Um, uh, as well as some like um, some flask of like pina colada mix that I was drinking before the dream state. Um, but I, I also take some waters out of my bag and put it around the puppy pot pile and be like, just make sure y'all stay hydrated. Let me know if there's a problem. All right. If you need some prophylactics, I have those because everybody got to stay safe. <laughs> have fun. Just have fun. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to have a beer with the others and just kind of keep an eye out <laughs> just in case. Um, but my other, I have a, a question. You mentioned one of the, the Buddha statues had a bunch of arms. Is mm -hmm. that kind of what that big green entity looked like? Was it very like, because you mentioned a lot of arms and almost tentacles. Mm -hmm. so I'm curious if there is some kind of connection with that there too. Possibly. Okay. Okay. Just curious. So yeah, definitely knocking back a cold one with uh, Mira 
and uh, train wreck and, um, and just keeping an eye on everybody to make sure everyone's okay. Cool. And as the, <laughs> uh, as the sun rises in the, uh, in the distance, things start to get a little brighter outside. You can see from beyond the edges of the tent and the, the folks who have been energetically enjoying themselves have now uh, snuggled up and some of them are going back to sleep. Other ones are stroking each other's hair, but the energy has grounded. Everyone has had a good time. And the tent, the Temple of Tranquility now seems to actually be finally living up to its name. Things are nice, peaceful, calm, quiet, and you have all done a wonderful job. Well done, everybody. And eventually, you know, after after a little while, as you're as you're enjoying things, catastrophe comes back over and uh, and asks what you would like uh, for for having. And she congratulates all of you. She says you've done you've done wonderful things. Thank you. She says, I'd like to know who it was who told. Cyrene and put her up to this, but that person or those people or that entity aren't here any longer. But I'll have to, I'll have my holy fools keep an eye out for them to make sure this doesn't happen again. You've done a wonderful job. Thank you, all of you. What do you ask of me? I would like to be able to turn into a cat. She says, well, I can do things only at the festival, but for as long as, as long as you are at catastrophe until the, uh, until the sun rises on the final, uh, until the sun rises after the final day of catastrophe, as long as you are here on the grounds, you can turn into a cat and back as often as you like. And if you test that, yeah, yeah, you can. And being a cat's kind of awesome. You freak the shit out of your real cats because they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll figure it out. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 puzzle it out, but it, it does definitely like this smells like mom, but doesn't look like mom anymore. What the hell? Okay, mm -hmm. I guess that's mom. I'm gonna turn into a cat then, and then just kind of like snuggle up with my cats, but closer to Auntie Sharon. She's got those great scratching nails. <laughs> And Auntie Sharon, what do, what do you ask of catastrophe? Uh, can you come back to me? I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> <I'm not laughs> okay. sure Therese, what about you? I'm going to ask for an acoustic guitar. Okay. So she says, well, actually, right next to you materializes this absolutely gorgeous, like a 1953 Martin, I can't remember the uh, the name off the top of my head, but it's 12 string with pearl inlays and you pick it up and it just feels absolutely right. Like it was made for you because somebody didn't know it was. Uh, you've never felt a guitar that felt more right than this for you. And when you when you give it a strum, it sounds like heaven. And Catastrophe says, this guitar only lasts until the, uh, the final day of the festival, the, the morning after the final day of the festival. But until then, enjoy. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I'm gonna start playing something celebratory. Cool, excellent. And Hex, what about you? Just surely oh. she says you want more than just coffee. You would be right. I was a little hasty, but again, caffeine deficient. I would like a shiny tarot deck, please. I've always wanted to delve into cartomancy. Cool. And she waves her hand and this absolutely beautiful deck, um, one unlike any you've ever seen, and in fact, looks to be, when you, when you look through it, it's like people in catastrophe type garb. And it's all set in... <clears throat> what is obviously catastrophe, but there are four different settings uh, for the for the minor arcana. 
<clears throat> there's the one of them is the de the desert the Nevada Desert Festival like this one. One of them seems to be in a very deep uh, deep woodlands. <clears throat> one of them is set in a swamp. Uh, not sure how a festival in a swamp would go, but the cards look awesome. And one of them is up in mountains. Uh, and you can see, you know, snow, snow covered peaks and so forth in the background. And, uh, you know, there are, there are woods down to the bottom uh, of, of the peaks and so forth. It looks like, you know, kind of like Colorado or, or Utah on the, uh, on the cards. And yeah, they're, they're beautiful. And they just feel like, again, feel like they were made for you because they were. I and, draw, I take a look at the deck. I draw a card at random and like, that seems fitting. Wheel of Fortune. Thanks. <laughs> I start flipping through it to look at the artwork. Cool. It's gorgeous. Yeah. And Catastrophe says, Sharon, you, 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 Auntie Sharon, you've done a wonderful job. You're, you're fantastic. And I would love to have you, any, any of the four of you are welcome to come back anytime. And, if you would, if you'd like to work here on a more permanent basis, within the festival constraints, of course, uh, you would be welcome here. Okay. Well, maybe in the future. Here's the thing. I figured out. Oh, I figured out what I wanted. I want to be off duty. That's what I would like. I'd like to have the energy of a twenty-year-old, so can I can enjoy myself and just the knowledge that everyone's going to be okay and no one's going to need Auntie Sherry, uh, Sharon, for the next few days. That's, that's what I want to know. Since all this magic is based around this particular festival, that is what I would like. I would like to be off duty. I'm tired. And so it is. And she, she waves her hand and you, you feel like you haven't had this kind of energy since you were like 15 and you're like, I want to dance. <laughs> and, and yeah, and she's, she's just like, thank you. And she goes, may, may I, may I give you a hug? To me, absolutely. Anytime. Happy to give a hug. She she gives you she gives you a big hug, and it feels wonderful, and it feels like coming home. Is in a strange way it is. Thank you, everybody. Good job. Thank you. That was oh, awesome. Thank you. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks. Y'all are y'all are great. You're a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any any questions? Anything that I can uh, that I can help out with? Uh, explain anything that you were wondering, like you know, how is this, or why is this, or how does this work, or how did you do uh, this sort of thing? I have a question. I have this wheel of uh, quintessence, uh, quintessence, and paradox, mm -hmm. and I spent like. 45 minutes last night trying to figure out what the heck is this and why do I need it? It's um, an overcomplication is what it is, honestly. Uh, that's what it felt like, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, I, I, when I came into Mage, the, the, um, the, the, the groundwork had already been laid. I personally would have gotten rid of it, but I didn't really have the, the opportunity to do that. What it represents, though, is quintessence is your vital life energy, the, the sort of thing that you've all been you know, flinging around and, and channeling and so forth throughout, throughout the game. And one of the things you can do with your, with your avatar is draw in even more of that uh, even more of that energy and use more of that energy to make your, to make your magic easier. Um, if you do anything that is big, wild, obviously, you know, impossible by the standards of uh, normative culture, then you start to accumulate paradox. None of you did because none of you did anything that was, you know, like trying to, to conjure a, a, a plane or, you know, trying to blow up a, a car or anything like that. So uh, in, in Mage, paradox cancels out quintessence the more paradox you get the more kind of metaphysically unstable you get and and that has a very unfortunate effects if you accumulate a lot of it um but you didn't so it doesn't really matter and uh I said generally you want to have more quintessence in there than you want to have paradox but again neither none of you needed to worry about paradox uh if you were doing things that were way outside the, the boundaries of consensual reality, then paradox would become a problem. But again, none of you did. 
And one of the things about catastrophe is consensual reality is a hell of a lot more flexible than usual, <laughs> which is one of the reasons why I set the story here. That plus it's just, it's kind of, it's, it's fun to play with. You know, that kind of, that, that uh, different sort of reality that's separate from the everyday world, but still has, still brings a still brings in a lot of the, the issues of the everyday world. Yeah, I really love the the setting of the music festival. I thought that was a really fun way to kind of interact with this um, and and do all that because, like you said, it is its own little world and it's um, got its own rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Uh, I had a question because we never actually went into combat. Uh -huh. um, world of Darkness is great, but it's also unnecessarily complicated a lot of times like like you were talking about um and yeah. like the ones i've done I, I haven't done mage before um the combat is in time clocks sometimes so everybody mm -hmm. kind of goes is that how it works for mage too or is it different than mage uh kind of if you're if you got involved in a in a physical altercation or a magical altercation of some kind you would you would be rolling your initiative to see who you know who goes in what order uh and at that point you know you've Add your, uh, I think it's wits plus. Uh, I'd need to look again. <laughs> Sleep, but you would you would add your initiative to your um, wits plus dexterity, or your, your roll. Sorry, initiative has changed through various different editions. It sometimes takes me a minute to remember which one it is. Your wits plus awareness added together, or dexterity plus, whatever. <laughs> dexterity plus wits uh plus one die roll to determine what order you go in um and generally depending on what kind of combat you're doing that that might use your you know dexterity plus brawl or might use you know uh, dexterity plus firearms or magic or whatever but yeah it it goes in it, it go it, it's decided by initiative you know uh whoever's got the highest initiative uh, weirdly enough, goes last because you want to have the you want to have the person who's going slowest act first, so the people who are faster can react to uh, to what the slower people are doing. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Anything else? Anything like storyteller wise, or you know, game in terms of running games? Any any questions that I can answer, or any. Uh, techniques you want to you know, ask or talk about, or, you know, how did you do such and such, or um, as you probably noticed, uh, what I do when I'm running a game is I come up with a, a basic scenario and the, the people who are involved, I make notes, I just keep them out on note cards in front of me so that I can shift between them and glance at them as I need to. Uh, with some RPGs, there's like a whole, they use like a whole character sheet and a binder full of, and, and I just find that really cumbersome. Uh, no matter what game I'm running, I just tend to scroll down a few notes and run off the top of my head. I always decide who's doing what to whom when the characters show up and then just run with it. You know, uh, I've got a background in theater, so uh, improvisational theater is, is part of uh, part of what I part of what I bring into storytelling, um, and I believe that the um, I believe in the rule of yes. You, you know, rather than saying no, you can't do that unless it's a something that's going to break the game, or worse, something that's going to interfere with the enjoyment of the players. Uh, I, I don't like to say no, you can't do this. I want to say yes, you can do it. Show me how you're going to do this. Explain to me why you should be able to do this, and then figure that out. Um, I, I'm a big believer in that. That uh, that fun and fun and drama um, matter more than sticking to the rules or the roles. But different GMs, you know, work different way, different ways. That's the way I like to do it. So, for a one shot like this, I'm sure the prep time is different than like for a campaign. What would you say your like average um, prep time for that usually is for a longer campaign versus like a one shot? I'm curious. That's a really good question. Um, again, it really, I can, 
spend days laying out the who the characters are, who's doing what to whom, what the setting is, what the setting is like, uh, and how the setting will react to the uh, to the actions of the characters and the players. Uh, and then what I do between sessions, if I'm running an extended game with the same group, you know, in between sessions, I go, okay, they changed these things. How did how did the players' actions change the setting and how does the setting and the characters in the setting respond to what the players did and that generally again depending on how uh how elaborate it is could take me an hour or it could take me several hours uh and when i back when i was the, the last regular game i was running uh was a werewolf the apocalypse game uh with with uh, my wife and my friend brian and a few other folks and I could spend the better part of a day laying out the groundwork for how to do stuff and then, you know, making a bunch of notes uh, and not only extrapolating what was, what was happening in the immediate, um, with, the, with, with the immediate story, but how that story was going to trigger other stories. But again, it really depends on uh, how much of the setting you're, you're making up uh, and how much of it is based on real life, uh, how much of it is, you know, something you could just write down on an index card and how much of it that you have to actually have a map or something for. Uh, I do have a, well, it's a very basic map, but I, I, I personally don't, don't do a lot of elaborate preparations, but some people, the preparation and doing really elaborate maps and so forth is part of the fun. So it really depends a lot on what you prefer. I have a general question for you. Um, I'm not new to playing, but I'm definitely new to running games. And it kind of feels like drinking from a fire hose. Like, how do you even <laughs> begin to wrap your head around a system? Because I can see from behind you, you have done that more than a couple of times. Oh, yeah. Um, I just, when I'm running a game, I like to just figure out what the basics are and make up the rest, which is ironic considering that for the Mage 20 line, I wrote between the various different books, uh, probably about three quarters of a million words worth of rule systems. And ironically, as a game master, I don't like having a lot of rules, but I realize as a designer that not everybody has been gaming for 42 years and, and has a background in improvisational theater. The rules are there, I feel, as a designer and as a gamer, the rules are there to facilitate the experience. I personally feel that having a lot of rules or paying a lot of attention to rules tends to bog the story down or tends to, tends to bog the game down. But some people, and it depends a lot on the players as well. And that's something you get a feel for when you're running a regular group uh, is some people feel that it is very essential to have the rules because they need a sense of certainty. Uh, and that is something that the rules are good for is consistency. Um, if you're making things up too wildly, then people feel like they don't know what they can do and what they can't do. Um, and for also from a designer standpoint, and sometimes from a game master standpoint, you also deal with people whose enjoyment comes from breaking the game and ruining other people's fun. Personally, my number one rule for gaming is don't game with dicks. Um, but, you know, we, we, don't, we don't always know who, who's going to try and break the game when we start running. Um, so the short answer to that question is I just familiarize myself with the basic systems and then bend those systems in whatever direction seems <clears throat> seems to work best for me and for the group other people want an encyclopedic knowledge of the rules and that really depends on how you want to run the game and what your players desire oh thank you sure thanks but yeah jennifer laura any, anything meredith cool well, thank you everybody